you want to introduce yourself in a traditional way, not everyone does, but I love that. <laughs> I just said, you know, Blue Sky Woman is my name in uh, Indian way, and um, also I have an English name, which is Winnie Le Perry. Uh, I was taught this gift, was given this gift to teach how to make baby moccasins from my grandmother, and her name was Ada Yankee, her Indian name was um, Banuj. And, and um, I've been coming here to the reservation now. I'm from this reservation, Fond du Lac. I was born and raised here and um, met my husband when I was about 19. I uh, met him in college in Duluth and then I moved to East Lake. And um, my grandmother lived out there and she uh, she's the one who taught me um, all kinds of things. She taught me how to raise, she taught me how to sew beads, she taught me how to work on leather, do hides. Um, all my knowledge that I have, you know, I, I look at them as gifts given to me by an elder and so that I could carry on our traditions of what Indian women did. I want to apologize. I'm new to these ways and I miss things sometimes. I apologize. But I had to have some Asema. Oh, okay. okay. All right, you're good, you. right. And I apologize. I didn't mean to okay. to not follow the protocol. I'm just mm -hmm. learning. Tell me what you were just telling um, Pat about uh, the plan with these little kits that you have and what and what. Well, it, the reason why I chose baby moccasins to learn is so that that um, the women and the men that have came here to learn this, I wanted to get out the message to support. Uh, I, I can't recall the woman's name, but she was on the circle this last past edition or issue, and she was talking about that we need to stop the cycle of um, abuse that our women are doing to our future generations. So I dedicated these moccasins today that we're making moccasins for the, our future children. Our, you know, and our children were given to us as gifts. And somehow our young women have strayed off that path and started to abuse their bodies while they're pregnant. You know, I'd like to, I, you know, when I read that article, I, I felt so um, moved by it, you know, that I always knew that there had to be something done, that there's, and so as women, I believe that we have to start letting our young women know, and our young men, you know, that, you know, we, we cannot no longer allow our young women to abuse their bodies when, when when they're carrying that gift of life. I'm working on a project for some fathers actually for next week at the at the baby shower. And we were gonna talk to some fathers and I've been talking to fathers, but just hearing you talk right now I feel kinda like asking you this question I've been asking them and that is you know, in, in this case of this tradition or maybe a new tradition that could grow out of this time that we're in now, what, what, do you feel like you could say something to fathers, you know, like a, a message about how we should be fathering our children and maybe being partners and husbands and, you know, brothers and other relatives to the, our women? Uh, yes, I, I, I think I could, you know, um, I had some young men stop by here this morning, you know, and I talked with them and they were kind enough to sit down and, and listen to me and I almost felt like, oh, you know, that they were so respectful and listening to me, you know, and I told them, you know, I asked them where they came from, they told me, and I said, you know, you guys are in the middle of your lives, you know, I said, back in the 60s and 70s, you know, they were saying that Indian men's 
life expectancy was like 67 or something and I told that one guy I said you're you know if we go on that number you know I don't know what it is now you know but it might be even younger because of you know our drug abuse and our alcoholism and our young people are living you know high risk lives and you know and I think that men are just as responsible for that life and that mother my, you know? my father-in-law when he when he died a few years ago um I guess he was about 52, you know, and that wasn't, he wasn't the first, you know, man that we know that, you know, had died around that time. You know, but, you know, the message that I would, you know, want to give fathers is that, you know, they got to be just as responsible. If they're that, mm -hmm. that baby's father, then they have a part in it, you know, they got to help that woman stay away from those chemicals and alcohol you know because I've worked in public schools you know in my past and you know and it 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 it, it amazed me at the amount of kids that we were getting in special ed you know that were affected by alcohol you know and you know, it, it can be prevented, you know, I, I, you know, I took a lot of training in fetal alcohol, um, you know, they used to call it fetal alcohol syndrome, but now they, I don't know, they call it something else, but I know they, I always gave the messages, you know, either you can take care of this child from now until he's 18, or I said, if you choose to drink and abuse that child, you'll have to take care of them for the rest of your life. Because I believe that, you know, um, we're gonna have, I mean, we can see it already, you know. I, I see we have adults that were affected by alcohol. And, you know, they gotta have somebody to help manage their lives. Otherwise people, you know, they're, they are vulnerable adults. So people who have that fetal alcohol exposure, I think it might be fetal alcohol spectrum disorder okay, sometimes. Okay. Uh, I've heard that. Mm -hmm. So those people are are vulnerable and they need that active parenting or grandparenting their whole lives. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, um, you know, I know that when I went through that training there, you know, about 20 years ago, you know, when they first when it first came out and stuff. You know, that's what they're saying. Either you know, you take care of it till 18, or else all their life. You know, I you know, I'm seeing that. You know, I don't know. Maybe we need to. You know, like they have assisted living for elders and stuff. Maybe we're gonna have to do, you know, assisted living units for um, vulnerable adults that are affected by alcohol. You know. You know, they they might be the ones that are sitting in the prisons, the ones you know that are homeless. You know, because you know we as women and men, you know, need to you know say we gotta break this cycle. You know, it's gotta stop. So this, uh, I can tell you, feel really strongly about this. And this effort with these with these moccasins, and you put a lot of effort into it. Talk about putting them together, and who helped you, and, and what your what your I guess dream is, or vision is, or <coughs> hope is for this this weekend. Um, I'm just you know this is my first year here, you know, and I'm really happy that you know I was asked to be here. Uh, um, I'm not afraid to share the gifts that I've been given and you know if people come in a good way and give me that tobacco you know I'll teach them you know so you know uh, before we started eating you know I smudged all the women and I told them and there was a couple men I had two men that were here and they did a good job beating both of them you know and I said you know I'm I want everybody to be in a good frame of mind, you know, and be in a good place, you know, because we're making something for somebody in the future. That's, you know, 
and th these little moccasins are going to go to some little person, you know. How, how much a part of your experience growing up in the culture here, how much of that was about that value of generosity? It does get talked about a lot, of, you know, making something, investing time and energy and prayer, it sounds like, in something, and it's just, it's to be given away, and you might not even know who it's going to be given to. Uh, I think, you know, um, you know, with um, Indian people, um, I think that Indian people, you know, you know, the way we were brought up, you know, was to share what we had, you know, to share our knowledge or to share our food or to share our dwelling or to share our blankets if they didn't have something, you know. So I was always brought up to feed whoever came to your house, you know. We were always cooking, you know, it seemed like, you know. So you feed them, even if you didn't have any, have much, you still fed them. You know, you still gave them, you know, is, is what it, whatever you could give them, you know. And so I've lived my life like that, you know, to always take good care of, you know, our children. I raised four children, they're all adults, and now I have like 15 grandchildren. And, and I passed it on to them, and I have a daughter that you know, um, one day be the teacher. I got a daughter-in-law that I'm passing my gift on to. And they're, and they're here. And they're here yeah. with me, you know, and, you know, so I, in my family, um, my daughter beads and she does leather work. And my son, he beads and my other son, he beads, you know, so, Eventually, you know, they'll be making moccasins, my sons, but they do very, I mean, they were gifted with it. They just picked it up, started beating, you know, so, you know, it makes me happy, you know, like that day when I see my grandma and she came to see me, this was a long time ago, and I was beating cradle board covers, and that, that day that she came and see me and she was looking at my beadwork and she was like, oh, oh, this is really nice, she said. She said, who, who taught you how to be? And I looked at her, you know, I was, I, I was pregnant and I had my beads back like this and I had my beads on my belly there. You were beading on your belly, yeah, on your pregnant belly? Yeah, I had, you know, and uh, it was my last child, his name is Ojawa Bisa. But anyway, I was beading there and then she said, Oh, she said, who taught you how to be? Hello? Uh, sat up, I said, Graham. Hey, bonjour, everybody. I you said, you taught right me how. One thing, uh, who did? What did she mean by that question? Or? Well, she wanted to know who taught me, and here it was her. And she had forgotten, you know, because she was getting older, you know. And when I told her that you taught me, she had the biggest grin on her face, and I could see that she was happy that I had learned from her and that I was keeping that this tradition. You know, and that was the, you know, one of the happiest moments of my life is when I seen that big grin on her face. You know, and I seen that she was so proud, you know. Oh, I thought he was by himself. Who's he with? You know, I just miss that old lady. She was a good woman. She raised till she was 86. And uh, I was going to raise till I was 86, but I got hurt, you know, about five years ago. But I loved being out there in that rice field. And. <laughs> Because, you know, she's the one who taught me how to do all those things. This is a... Just a few you, you're teaching, but you're also going through a lot of feelings out here. Oh, yeah. I'm remembering all the old people that showed me the ways. So I'm passing it on to my kids and my daughters and laws and my daughter. You know, and, uh, you know sometime, someday my little granddaughter will be sewing and teaching. Do you think it's been done this way for 10,000 years, what you described? Yeah, I 
think so. I want to thank you so much for your time. I'll be around some more tomorrow. Maybe we'll okay. talk some more. Okay. Well, miigwech, bisindawiyek.